Hi there, my name is Lonnie Ayers and I'm the president of SAP BW Consulting. These are my top 10 hints and tips for the final preparation phase. The first tip is be sure that you have your realization phase document signed off. This can be the most difficult part of any phase completion, getting the business owners to sign up. Training continuous buy-in and selling are the keys here. My second tip is get your FRICE completed. FRICE stands for Forms, Reports, Interfaces, Conversions, and Enhancements. Invariably, some will not be done and others will have changed due to requirements that you discover during development. Manage these things tightly. My third tip is end user training. Make your life easier. Over train. Cut the scope before you cut in user training. And then train some more. My fourth is revalidate your business case. Though your SOW was based on your initial RFP requirements, changes will most certainly have occurred during the project. You need to realign your expectations with the new reality of what the project will deliver. My fifth tip is get your project management plan updated. Though it is a step that seems less critical from a compliance and management standpoint, it's very important to update it. My sixth tip is change management is now globally deployed. The scope and scale of change management processes will swing into high gear during this phase. You can expect to start hearing a lot more rumbling from the business users. What is the secret to managing this? Communicate, communicate, communicate some more, and then communicate yet again. My seventh tip is, is to conduct your final project review. It's especially important if a large number of developments were necessary. This is also critical to gain that final buy-in from your customer. My eighth tip is to prepare your data migration plan. This typically includes what to do with open purchase orders, financial issues, and all human resources issues. This is always a complex process, but it has been done on virtually every project. So leverage what has been done before and use the templates and tools such as the Advanced Data Migration Workbench or the Legacy System Mic migration workbench. My ninth tip is to make sure the solution manager is now fully up to date. This should be a minor issue because at this point you will have used it for both the blueprint and realization phase and all documentation should be in it. By now you should be an expert using the extensive reporting functionality of a tool. If not, we have some handy guides you can use for it. Just come over to sapbwconsulting.com and download and I'm sure you'll get some benefit out of it. My tenth and final tip is to decide on the parallel systems approach. This will have started during the blueprint phase. It will almost certainly always have systems that will continue to operate alongside SAP while you transition. It is very difficult to scope this from a manpower perspective. A recent project with the Miami-Dade County School District where they decided to take the SAP financials out of scope and run their legacy system financial system is a good indicator of the types of problems you can run into it here. That project failed. The bottom line is SAP is an integrated system and you need to use it to the maximum extent possible. It's not integrated to legacy systems, but it can be. And in either case, your SOW did not get this right. Ever. Thanks.